Hi, I'm Luke from Ecopoxy, and today we're going to revisit a project we did three years ago at the Ecopoxy Project Lab, where we showed you step by step how to construct a beautiful river table using reclaimed live edge wood slabs and Ecopoxy deep casting resin. So let's get started. We started the project with a slab of reclaimed poplar that came from a tree in our CEO's front yard. Unfortunately, the tree had to be cut down because of the risk of it falling during a heavy storm. But we're going to give it a new life as a river table. Make sure whatever wood you use is dried and seasoned. If you buy your live edge slabs from a lumber store, it should already have been kiln dried. Clean up any bark and sand off any loose material from the live edges. You need to create a good clean surface for the epoxy to bond to. Cleaning the surface also eliminates voids that could trap air bubbles during pouring, and it adds to the strength of the tabletop. Once your slabs are prepped, you can start to cut them to the desired length. Make sure the ends and edges are square. We're using a table saw, but you can do this by miter saw, track saw, or even circular saw with a straight edge. Alright, now it's time to start building the mold. Cut the base and side pieces to your desired dimensions. We used melamine, but MDF or plywood will also work great for this. Make sure the sides of the mold are at least half an inch taller than the thickness of the slab to avoid any overflows during the pour. Cover each piece of the mold with a sealing tape, like this red tuck tape. We recommend using screws to put the mold together. This will help when it comes to removing the mold later. Apply a bead of silicone to the inside corners of the mold. You could also tape the edges, but silicone is easier to apply and better at creating a leak-proof seal. Okay, the mold is finished and now it's time to clamp down your boards. Your wood pieces will float in the epoxy otherwise, so this keeps them flat and in place. Now it's really important that you don't screw the slabs from underneath. All epoxies experience a small amount of expansion and contraction during the curing process. The slabs could pull apart if they aren't free to move a little. That's why clamping is best. Ensure that the form is level and as leak-proof as you can make it. It's also a good idea to put down a piece of poly below your mold to ensure any blowouts end up on the poly and not on your floor. The next step is to figure out how much resin you'll need. In the past, that meant figuring it out with a formula and a calculator, but now we can use the handy Flowcast volume calculator. The link is right there on the front page at ecopoxy.com. Just figure out the average gap between the slabs and enter that as your width. Then enter your length and depth measurements and it'll tell you the volume of flow cast you need in gallons or in liters. In this instance, the average gap was 5.5 inches, the length was 50, and the depth was 3 inches. So when we plug that into the volume calculator, that gives us 3.75 gallons or 14.2 liters. We always round up to ensure we have enough product, so for this table we ended up using 15 liters of flow cast. It's a 2 to 1 mix ratio by volume for standard pours up to 1.5 inches in depth in a single pour. Always mix the desired amount of resin with exactly half the amount of hardener, and then mix until clear. Now we're going to add the pigment. For this table we're going to use one of our metallic pigments called caviar. We wanted the table to be opaque, so we're going to add about half of the 15 gram container of pigment. You could also use one of our regular pigments for a solid color, or maybe add polyester glitters, or even add no pigment for a glass-like appearance. Once the epoxy is mixed, let it rest for 15 to 20 minutes. This eliminates most of the air bubbles. Now pour the deep cast resin, making sure to get every part of your table. We want to pop any remaining air bubbles. We used a torch, but a heat gun also works. As you may have noticed, the pour is a lot thicker than the recommended 1.5 inch depth, but you can do this thicker pour if you have proper heat dissipation. 
So we're going to set up these two fans to help dissipate some of the heat that's generated during the curing process. You'll need to turn on the fans when the temperature approaches 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit, and that occurs around 6 to 8 hours after the pour. If you're going to exceed 1.5 inches in a single pour, make sure you use an infrared thermometer to keep an eye on the temperature. Now we're going to let it cure for a full 72 hours. Okay, it's been three days and now it's time to unscrew the mold. Remove the sides and the back gently with either a putty knife or a pry bar. You can finish the tabletop with a belt sander like we did, or you can use a planer or even a router with a router sled jig. Once it's flat and smooth on both sides, it's time to start sanding. Always start coarse and slowly increase to a finer grit. For this project, we sanded the wood all the way up to 220 grit. We sanded the epoxy section to a 320 wet sand, removing all the marks from the previous rounds of sanding. We wanted the table to have a satin look, so we finished it with two coats of Osmo Pollux Oil Clear Satin Hard Wax Oil Finish. But for a durable glossy look, you could always use our Eco Poxy UV Poxy Crystal Clear Coating Resin as a final top coat. And just like that, we've turned reclaimed wood into a beautiful, one-of-a-kind coffee table you'd be proud to display in your living room. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed seeing how a project like this comes together. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And while you're there, click the notification bell and be sure to hit the like button. You can also like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and be sure to visit us anytime at ecopoxy.com. Thanks again.